So I got this bandsaw for Christmas, and it's now almost April, <laughs> and I'm finally getting around to unboxing it and using it. It was an absolute nightmare to get out of the box for some reason. I figured putting it on the table and then peeling the side off it and then sliding it out would make the most sense, and then trying to do that ended up being an absolute nightmare. It's quite heavy, so I couldn't just pull it out of the top, but at the same time that probably would have been easier, or maybe if I'd opened it from the bottom and slid the top off. Now I'm thinking about it, that makes the most sense, doesn't it? But at the time this was my plan and it took me quite a long time. <laughs> so I got some of the like more boring technical specifications, so I'll give you those just while this is still me trying to work out how to open the box. It's got a 350 watt motor and it moves at just under 12 meters per second. The blade length is 1575 millimeters and the width is 6.35 because it comes with a blade. It's got a maximum cutting width of 230 millimeters and a cutting depth of 80 millimeters and it's about 20 kilos and it comes with a 305 by 305 millimeter table. It also comes with a terrible push stick, some support extensions which I don't really understand you're supposed to put them on the base and I didn't. I don't really know what they're supposed to do. Maybe make it so it doesn't tip backwards, but I don't really see why it would. Got some feet. And a surprisingly not terrible miter gauge, although it does come with an awful rip fence which you'll see me use later on. There's one thing I will say about this entire unit is the instructions for it were terrible. They're just like really unclear. Like there's other little things that I knew I'd have to do that aren't in the instructions. Like, I can't remember what they're called now. I want to say like bushings. But I'm not totally sure. There's like two little pieces of metal that sit either side of the blade and they're supposed to just barely, like not quite touch the blade but almost pinch it and it's just to stop the blade from wandering so much. The instructions just don't mention that at all. I know that because I've watched other videos about using bandsaws but that isn't in the instructions anywhere. I didn't actually do that and I should have done. You'll see later on you can actually see that the gap is massive and I just didn't notice that at the time but before the next time I use it I'll go and sort that. There's some of the blade guard, and there's also some under the table. And like I say, the instruction booklets just don't mention them at all. So the first thing to do after finally managing to get it out of the box was to put the feet on. And I figured the best way of doing this would just be to overhang the corners off the edge of the table a little bit and thread them through, which worked mostly okay. I had some issue where the adjustable wrench I had was like angled, which is like pretty normal, but it meant there was no good way of turning it. No matter what angle I used the wrench at to turn the nut, the wrench would always bang into the bandsaw itself at some point, which just made turning it really annoying. It probably would have been better with like a socket wrench or something, but I didn't have one that would actually like cover the entire nut. Then after that was getting the table fitted, and I actually have trimmed out a huge amount of time of me trying to fit this table because the instructions are not very clear at all, to be honest. What you're trying to do is there's like a tooth part underneath the table which slots onto like a gear which is how you change the angle of the table itself. And then above that is a slot and within that slot you're supposed to fit two, I don't really know what they are, just like bars that stick out. One of them you eventually put like a locking handle in to stop you turning the table when you don't want to. I just don't know why there's two of them. The issue I had is that there is also a small sort of like metal clip which it just points at the table and tells you what angle it's at, which is fine. Except you're actually supposed to slide the table in horizontally along the blade and then tip it backwards and sort of angle it in so that it goes behind this piece of metal and that just wasn't clear in the instructions. I don't know honestly actually if that's what you're supposed to do or what I ended up doing which is removing the piece of metal altogether and then putting it back on after I'd put the table in place. But that little piece of metal was stopping me from putting the table in and I struggled with this for like 20 minutes. I struggled with this for a very long time because the entire time you're doing this as well there's a like yellow gear which you use to turn the table you're supposed to have that pulled out the entire time as well so you've only got like one hand to do all this with and i just couldn't get it at all until i took that piece of metal off and then it just went in first try i was like really worried while i was doing this that i was going to damage the blade because it was like rubbing up against the edge of the plate a lot but the second i worked out to remove that piece of metal it just went on immediately and it was so much easier it should just be in the instructions after getting the table fitted and everything, the next thing was to try and square the blade to the table. You raise the blade guard as high as it'll go, and then put a square in between the blade and the table. And the issue I had is I don't have a small enough square. <laughs> so I then spent about like 5 or 10 minutes just trying other pieces of metal that I had lying around. I tried using the rip fence, but I couldn't get that on at the time. Eventually, I decided, well, I'll just get the table level. And it turns out it basically already was. 
what I did eventually do though was I used my combination square to find the edge of a ruler that was definitely square and then tried to use that to square up the blade. It didn't work very well to be honest. I'm gonna have to just get a smaller square to do this properly but for now it worked well enough. I also at this point tried to tension the blade properly which you change the tension using like a screw that's on top of the machine and then you sort of pluck the blade like a guitar string and it makes different noises. I would have let you hear that but it didn't seem to do anything. <laughs> I don't know if I was just doing it wrong or if there was something up with the machine that I wasn't understanding properly but I couldn't get it to make a different noise. The next part was checking the tracking and the most strenuous part of this was just opening the case. Now all of this footage is sped up but I spent almost five minutes unscrewing that screw because it seems to be the longest screw I've ever seen. Luckily for me it was tracking fine anyway so I didn't have to adjust anything with that. So this is where I came to installing some of the accessories like the rip fence and the rip fence is the tightest thing. It turns out that it's got like a handle on the front of it and you turn it and it loosens it or tightens it and that's fine. I didn't realise that at first which is why I struggled to get it on so much. Once I managed to get it on it seemed okay until I came to doing a cut and then when I got to do a cut it turns out that when you lock it the fence moves so it's really hard to actually get it in place. What I might end up doing is instead of using the handle to lock it at all I might just over tighten it so that it holds flat essentially. I can't really describe it, it won't be locked in place because of the spring it'll actually be locked in place because it's too tight. I think that'll give it to me straighter and it'll also mean that I won't be making it move when I'm just trying to lock it in place, it's really annoying. Came with a little miter gauge which actually fit in the slot which I was surprised by because all of the other ones I've ever seen have a lot of play in the slot like especially the one for my table saw but this one seemed to fit okay although it's tiny and doesn't have a handle. And then I wanted to do a test cut so I've left the audio for that so I won't talk over it just so you can see what it sounds like. I thought it was a lot quieter than I expected. I expected it to be really loud and it just wasn't. One of the reasons I wanted this bandsaw is because I wanted to try and resaw some pieces that I had to give me more thinner pieces rather than just a couple of thick pieces. They're actually like old wooden Jenga blocks from like an outdoor Jenga set and I was gonna resaw all of them to be thinner just so I had even more of them. But like I was mentioning the fence, I don't know honestly if it's the fence that was a problem or not or if it's like the blade tension was wrong or something but maybe I wasn't putting enough pressure at the back to hold it flat but for whatever reason it wasn't cutting straight. I ended up getting rid of the fence altogether and trying to just do it freehand and then I was like this isn't working. One other nice thing you can do with a bandsaw though is curve cuts so I was like I'll try that and I think it looks quite nice it works all okay. Originally that was just going to be the end of the video. I just took it into the bedroom to show my wife look it can do curve cuts. And while she was holding it, I was looking at it and I was like, actually no, I know what this could be. So I took it back into the room and I got my drill out and I drilled a little hole in it and it became a little incense burner. Now it's not perfect as an incense burner because usually they would have like a groove in like the flat section of the body where the incense would land after it's burned. I could do that. I could use my router and grind out a little groove, which wouldn't take me very long. But I was originally just going to try a little test cut. I wasn't planning on making anything proper. So I just wanted to get it done quickly after this idea. Which is also why you can just see me use like a cheap sanding block rather than sanding it with my usual sanding setup. I didn't go up through any grits or anything, I literally just grabbed the sanding block I had and sanded it dead quickly to take the edges off it. And then the finish I use, it's a food safe finish that I made over Christmas to put on some like serving plates that I gave to people as gifts. I'm actually pretty happy with it. <laughs> it was complete chance, like I wasn't planning on making anything but I think it looks quite nice and it might get some use, it might not. She doesn't really do much with incense anymore but we had some lying around and it gave me the idea so I figured I'd try it out and I think it looks okay. Overall the bandsaw itself is fine. I'm happy with most of it. I'm really not happy with the fence but maybe I can work out ways of making that better. But other than that, like yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'd like to see what other projects I can make with it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs and Koopy Vegeta. 
You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash holdengatsby, check out my TikTok and Twitter at holdengatsby, and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash holdengatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to all of my channels, if you want more you can watch my last video now, but if not, then thanks for sticking around, bye.